You are watching for the greater good. Hey everyone. So here we are again, and in this video I am going to talk about machine learning, and how I made my first machine learning project. As it is evident in the title, I used Python library Scikit-learn, which is an open source machine learning library that supports supervised and unsupervised learning. It also provides various tools for model fitting, data pre-processing, model selection and evaluation, and many other utilities. Ok so let's get started, first of all, you need a project. Visit Kaggle.com and sign into your account. If you don't have an account then sign up. After you are done with this, go to Compete and enter any competition you like. As for beginners, I entered this particular competition where I had to predict the popularity of songs using regression model. After reading the complete instructions, the next thing which I did was downloading the datasets. Click on the data tab, scroll down and click on download all. After the datasets are downloaded revisit them to get a clear understanding of what the project is about. So this is the train data, as you can see it has labels under the heading pop, which is short for popularity. And this is the test data, the labels are missing, and it's our task to predict the popularity of songs in test data, after training our model. Now I will show step by step, how I accomplished my project. I hope you might be familiar with scikit-learn, if not then I will be uploading another tutorial which will get you started with machine learning. In the first cell of Jupyter Notebook, I have installed all the relevant libraries needed. NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib and scikit-learn are the most important ones. The next thing which I did was importing all the libraries. Here I have created a function which loads all the data from CSV file, which I showed you earlier. The train data gets stored in variable name Spotify underscore train, and similarly test data gets stored in variable name Spotify underscore test. The second thing which I did was to copy the labels in another variable. Let's take a quick look of our data. There are total of 14 attributes and one column for labels. The info method is useful to get a quick description of the data, in particular the total number of rows, and each attribute's type and number of non-null values. The describe method shows a summary of the numerical attributes. The count, mean, min, and max rows are self-explanatory. The std row shows the standard deviation. The 25%, 50%, and 75% rows show the corresponding percentiles. Another quick way to get a feel of the type of data you are dealing with is to plot a histogram for each numerical attribute. A histogram shows the number of instances on the vertical axis that have a given value range on the horizontal axis. It's time to prepare the data for your machine learning algorithms. 
Over here we got rid of 5 attributes which are not important, and 1 column for labels. A sequence of data processing components is called a data pipeline. Pipelines are very common in machine learning systems, since there is a lot of data to manipulate and many data transformations to apply. Now we have to take care of missing values in our data. Scikit-learn provides a handy class to take care of missing values called imputer. This will fill all missing values with median of their respective columns. One of the most important transformations you need to apply to your data is feature scaling. With few exceptions, machine learning algorithms don't perform well when the input numerical attributes have very different scales. Scikit-learn provides a transformer called Standard Scaler for standardization. Scikit-learn provides the pipeline class to help with such sequences of transformations. Here is a small pipeline for the numerical attributes. At last. You framed the problem, you got the data and explored it, you wrote transformation pipelines to clean up and prepare your data for machine learning algorithms automatically. You are now ready to select and train a machine learning model. I tried many different models, but the best model which worked for me was Random Forest Regressor. Now that the model is trained, let's evaluate it on the training set. A typical performance measure for regression problems is the root mean square error. It measures the standard deviation of the errors the system makes in its predictions. The lower the root mean square error, the better our model is. The following code performs k-fold cross-validation. It randomly splits the training set into 10 distinct subsets called folds, then it trains and evaluates our model 10 times, picking a different fold for evaluation every time and training on the other 9 folds. The result is an array, containing the 10 evaluation scores. Let's assume that you now have a short list of promising models. You now need to fine-tune them. One way to do that would be to fiddle with the hyperparameters manually until you find a great combination of hyperparameter values. Randomized Search CV evaluates a given number of random combinations by selecting a random value for each hyperparameter at every iteration. For random forest, the parameters which needs tuning are max features and n estimators. Note down the parameters for the value with least root mean square error. You can get the feature importance of each feature of your dataset by using the feature importance property of the model. Feature importance gives you a score for each feature of your data, the higher the score, more important or relevant is the feature towards your output variable. Over here, we got the most important attributes, which are energy, duration and acoustics. With this information, you may want to try dropping some of the less useful features. Do the same thing for test data now. Apply pipeline to test data. So here are our final predictions for popularity of songs in test data. Let's round them because we need integer values. As mentioned in the task. Finally export the above two columns as CSV file. Let me show you my exported file. Here you go. After exporting the CSV file, go to Submission tab in Kaggle and upload your CSV file. Here is my standing on leaders board, not bad I guess, as it was my first attempt. But you can surely note the power of Python library scikit-learn, which eases your task pretty much. I hope you enjoyed this video, feel free to comment if you are facing any queries, your recommendations and feedbacks are really important, signing off, for the greater good.